Hey, welcome to the Market Minute for the middle of June. Just want to share a couple articles I picked up out of the Globe and Mail. Um, here's one that talks about the interest rates in the U.S. Fed, which is the American version of the Bank of Canada, and how they're not going to raise rates for two full years. Uh, basically stating that the pandemic will weigh heavily on economic growth and return to prosperity will be slow. Uh, another article I picked up, it was an opinion article by Gordon Pape. You may remember Gordon from the mutual fund days, he used to write books, et cetera, but um, he's basically saying markets may rally, but we're still experiencing the worst collapse since the Great Depression and the future is anyone's guess. Um, strong words from uh, somebody that's been around for a long time and he's preaching being conservative. Uh, and the last article I wanted to share is one by Ian McGugan. Um, this is one that I would strongly recommend you go out and Google, look it up, it was from the Globe and Mail on Saturday the 13th. Uh, extreme market swings reflect uncertainty. Again, it's Ian McGugan. And uh, I thought this was an excellent article because it talked about the bears and the bulls. You know, um, the bears are those who are being conservative and thinking the market's gonna go down. The bulls are, are you know, no, put more money into it. Um, I'm not gonna go through all of this, but the bottom line was, he talks about three key components, which I think are really important. Number one, what happens if we have a second wave of the uh, coronavirus and how will that impact the economy? In fact, uh, he actually uh, mentions the fact the OECD Economic Outlook uh, published two charts, two possible paths for global economy. In both cases, the economy doesn't recover to its pre-pandemic levels for at least two years. One case is if the COVID is just uh, one and done, or we have a second wave. In either case, it doesn't bode well for long-term economic growth. Um, the other quite thing that I thought is interesting, a lot of people forget it. We have an election in the, well, we don't, but the Americans do in November. And how's that gonna play out on the economy? Of course, be, up until February, the economists and the market was actually predicting a Donald Trump victory. Now they're not so certain Biden's got the lead. So depending on which way that goes, that will have an impact on the stock market. And last but not least is the economy in general and politics, public policy. Governments on both sides of the border, and quite frankly, all around the world, are pumping more money, taxpayers' money, into the economy than we've ever seen, well, not only before, but uh, certainly not since the Great Depression. Listen, we're somehow that's got to come down to roost. Someone's got to pay for that. So that's going to play into this. Uh, hopefully it helps spurn economic growth and recovery for companies. But at the end of the day, it's also going to increase taxation. So a lot of this is going to play out. Uh, what I found very interesting, the bears are looking at those three components, the health crisis, uh, government policy and politics and saying, eh, maybe it's time to be conservative. Ironically, the bulls are saying those are the exact same reasons to go out there and buy into the stock market. Here's the quote, um, with ultra low rates also means ultra low bond yields. That leaves stocks the only game in town for those who crave better than dismal returns. Um, I've heard this argument before. While money has nowhere else to go, it's gonna go back into the stock market. So uh, I wouldn't worry about the stocks crashing. I, I, I'm not saying one way or another. I'm not an expert in that area, but that argument does feel like a house of cards to me. So uh, I'd be on the side of caution. Uh, anyways, like I said, I'm not an expert. I'm not trying to say, tell you what to do. I just wanted to share this because I thought it was very, very interesting. And if you'd like a link to that article, let me know. I'll send it to you. In the meantime, I hope you have a fantastic week. And if you have any questions or anything I can do to help you uh, with either your uh, portfolio investments, uh, please don't hesitate to send me an email at peter at diversify, that's diversify with an I, uh, diversify.ca. Uh, hope you have a great week. We'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.